Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains and to the Algorithms course at the University of Cambridge. So far we have seen a number of sorting algorithms, we've seen dynamic programming, we've seen greedy algorithms, and uh, from now on we're going to look at a variety of data structures and the algorithms that go with them. So now this seems uh, a good way to stop and think of the general meta problem of finding the algorithm to solve a problem. And unfortunately there exists no recipe that works all the time for finding the right algorithm, let alone uh, the optimal algorithm for a given problem. However, it's uh, useful and instructive to just have a look at a variety of strategies for designing algorithms that uh, have been successfully used in one case or another. And you may recognize in some of these strategies something that we have seen in one of the algorithms uh, previously described in this course. And when it comes the time for you to solve a new problem in your professional life, then having awareness of all these various strategies may inspire you to find the right algorithm for your problem. The end of this chapter has a summary of other uh, things which are possible ways of uh, designing an algorithm. And there's no recipe that works all the time for designing an algorithm. Um, but these things that uh, we have seen examples of, I mean, all these things here, recognize a variant on a known problem. We've used that before when, for example, we, we had a select sort. Uh, but if, if we did the same procedure, but we picked the minimum in a more efficient way, then we get heap sort, uh, reduced to a simpler problem. Uh, we've done that as well. Uh, well, anything that uh, reduces uh, to a small problem recursively, for example, like uh, merge sort uh, or quick sort. Uh, divide and conquer is another variant of this. And um, I think the subtle distinction made here is that with divide and conquer, once you've, once you've divided into small things, you're done. Uh, but in some cases, like, so in, in quick sort, once you've divided the individual parts and conquer them, it's finished. In merge sort, once you've divided into smaller things, you still have to do a recombination step after that. Backtracking we have not used uh, very much, but it is something that you may uh, see in graph. Uh, graph problems a lot, where you try something and it doesn't work, but ah, you had a choice previously that you haven't fully explored. You might go back to the choice. Uh, and try if uh, this takes you somewhere else. There's also a programming language called Prolog, which makes it an institution of uh, exploring things in this way. It makes it easy uh, to do the backtracking. You will see that in your second or third year, depending uh, which flavor of uh, CST you are. This is the interestingly named uh, Million Monkeys method which is based on that story of uh, if, if you gave a million monkeys a million typewriters and for a million years, then eventually they would produce Shakespeare, maybe. Uh, and it's just, just brute forcing, try things. Uh, it will not work uh, for other than small instances, but it has been used to um, some success in some limited cases. It's also the basis for what is known in testing circles as fuzzing. Just try throwing random inputs at stuff and see if something breaks. Uh, look for wasted work in a simple method. I guess that's another um, um, instance of what we did with um, the transition between select sort and heap sort. And seek a formal mathematical lower bound. We did that with sorting again when we said, well, uh, we, um, we establish that uh, it is possible to do that in at most uh, so many swaps, and in doing that, in establishing that, sometimes we give a constructive proof of an algorithm. Sometimes we don't, like when we said the bound is going to be n log n, nobody can do better than n log n. We didn't say how it was going to be done. It took a while to, uh, and, and a completely independent route to find uh, an algorithm that did it in n log n. And when we do find it, if we have already established a mathematical, uh, in this case it's not lower bound, but an upper bound, then we say, well, there's no point uh, looking for uh, substantial improvements over that because we know that it's 
impossible. But the lower bound, when we did the lower bound, actually we came with, uh, with a constructive proof of something that uh, achieved it. Uh, 